The next part of the Fisherman's Friend story was them playing at Glastonbury and supporting Beyonce on the pyramid stage, which stage, which just sounds mad. And they did leave a note on Beyonce's dressing room door. I can almost convince myself yes. that I had played at Glastonbury. James, it's lovely to see you. I see that you're wearing blue. I am wearing blue. I look where I am. I don't know if you if you've ever been here, but I am in. <gasps> I'm in Port Isaac. I'm so jealous. I've never been. I've never been. In oh, Florida. but that's because you've got so many gorgeous beaches up there. Why bother going all the way to Cornwall when you've got all those incredible beaches in the Western Isles? And I've spent a lot of time in Scotland, and I love those beaches. I've got incredible places. It's like the Caribbean, some of those sea seasides up there. Honestly, it's stunning. One thing I'm going to say that's going to disappoint you, I live in London. <laughs> oh, for oh God's sake. There I was, just going making terrible assumptions. <laughs> but you're totally right. Yeah, totally but when you were when growing up as a wee girl, you must have been there. Yes, absolutely. How does it feel to be back with this film? Yeah, I, yeah, you know, it was great coming back to it. I, I think we would only have come back if we could find a good story to tell. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as it happens, the next part of the Fisherman's Friend story was them playing at Glastonbury and supporting Beyonce on the pyramid stage, which stage, which <laughs> just sounds mad to even say that out loud, but that's what happened. Um, and, uh, and then we wanted to include a story about a man who was unravelling a bit and finding finding the pressure of fame difficult, although it's not really the pressure of fame that he's finding difficult. Like a lot of blokes, yeah. they let trauma and grief or whatever it might be sit heavily on their shoulders. You know, they get angry with people, they're grumpy, they... You know, they maybe maybe self-medicating on alcohol too much, trying not to feel um, the actual feelings that they're going through, um, and they don't pay attention to their mental health. And I think I just wanted I wanted to make a film where we talked about that, but I didn't want the film itself to be depressing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, to try and find a way to talk about that in a really light-hearted, good, feel-good film like this, where you know, you still get to see me dressed up as a fish finger. You still get all the shanties. You still get all the gags. You still get the beauty and majesty of Cornwall. But at the centre of the story is a man who's struggling. The guys are like putting a press junket. They absolutely hate it. They're doing radio interviews, things that this is new to them. But to you, it's like so normal. So was it hard trying to act as if you didn't really know what you were doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit. I, I think that, you know, Jim's pre... He's pretty confident in those kind of situations, and he 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 doesn't he doesn't suffer fools very easily, and he's got a good he's got quite a biting wit on him, so he's uh, and yeah so he just does yeah he doesn't he doesn't take journalists very seriously in that kind of situation, <laughs> which is you know very like the fisherman, believe you me. And what has it been like hanging out with them? Have you got to spend like? time with them maybe not as much during this because the pandemic and things but it must be such a laugh for them yeah because they're good lads you know they are good lads and we we, we on the first film we made we learnt all the songs in the pub um you know and then obviously we'd have like, the door of the pub would get locked and we didn't pay for any drinks after that <laughs> obviously but we did have some late nights in the pub where we learned the songs and we used those those to uh, to rehearse in and how did you first feel when you were having to kind of reapproach these sea shanties again because they're so loved you've got to get them right around here yes you've got to get them right you've got to get them right and if you don't get them right they're not backwards in coming forwards and telling right. you telling you've got them wrong <laughs> I love that. it's just which is fine as well you know i totally get it <laughs> and what was it like recreating that moment where they were supporting Beyonce. They did leave a note on Beyonce's dressing room door uh, and, uh, and and they did say don't nick any of our songs if you don't mind. <laughs> Not that it's going to. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing, incredible. I mean, part of the reason why I, they, I got involved in the second film was because the producer said, and here's the kicker, you will get to play Glastonbury in front of 80,000 people. Did you actually do it? Was it real? No, sadly not, because the pandemic got in the way. 
but so we had to recreate that and do that elsewhere but uh i think we get away with it in the film yeah. like I, i'd watch the film and i go uh, you would never know that you we weren't there well that's why i asked because i thought maybe there was a chance that you'd sometime no. to do it. <laughs> i can almost convince myself yes. that i have played at glastonbury <laughs> Your time at Glastonbury will come. I'm absolutely sure of it. <laughs> <laughs>